Welcome back to the Crypto Ski Conversation. Throughout this video, we're going to be taking a look at some updates with the Ripple vs. SC case, taking a look at some tweet threads, going to be taking a look at what happened with the Time Magazine of Vitalik Buterin, looking at James K. Filen's tweet thread, Stuart Alderati, going to take a look at CNBC and some updates within the markets when it comes to El Salvador, uh, you know, Russia stuff, Ethereum, some DAOs, some GameStop updates, and then some more positives within the market. So come over here looking at CoinGecko. We're currently sitting at a $1.96 trillion market cap, currently up 2.7% for the day. If we come down here and look at the top 10, Bitcoin sitting at $42,015. Ethereum sitting at $2,975. Tether Tether, Binance Coin sitting at $399. XRP sitting at $0.79. Cents. Terra sitting at $89, Solana $91, Cardano $0.85, cents. Avalanche sitting at $87. If we look at the top gainer in the last 24 hours, obviously this whole ApeCoin has been just on a massive tear. Uh, a lot of traction has been coming with this uh, Board at Yacht Club ApeCoin that had, came out. So they have a 32.4% increase in the past 24 hours. And then as you can see, we also have some more double-digit gainers here. Uh, coming over here to the Bitcoin Fear and Greed Index, we're currently sitting at a 28. So we're still in the fear range. We're not in the extreme fear range, which is positive. We're up three points from yesterday. So that is positive, but there's still a lot of uncertainty within our markets. And obviously that's due to a lot of other factors that's going on, you know, with Russia and uh, invasion of Ukraine, drone pile on the Fed and, and other uh, negative narrative issues out there. So coming to uh, the topic of discussion, starting off with this Johnny, uh, Johnny Deaton tweet thread here where he says he's responding to Stefan Huber's tweet where he says, Hey John, how's this possible? Why can Lubin do all this? He's talking about Joe Lubin from consensus. So why can Lubin do all this with the SEC watching and doing absolutely nothing? No, on the opposite, suing all other projects. I can't get this. I can't get this. My, what do you say? I cannot get this in my mind. I just can't. And then Johnny Deaton says, Stefan or Stefan, most people, not XRP holders, underestimate the incredible advantage the free pass gave Ethereum, consensus, etc. Ironically, it was Ethereum Joseph or Joseph Lubin who understood just how much the advantage it was. He says on August 5th, 2020, Lubin falsely claimed, quote, there are only two decentralized protocols on the planet right now that are sufficiently secure enough and decentralized enough so that they can be trust they can be trusted. Those are Bitcoin and Ethereum, and obviously we played this video before, and so we know that this has been debunked. And I have a video coming out Saturday of a gentleman from TikTok that kind of gave a quick and concise uh, version of why we believe, based on the the, the timeline we've put together, and you know, with them and their own words and them on video footage, why you know this is it isn't as decentralized as they claim Ethereum is. Coming out here, he says. Lubin added Bitcoin is too difficult to program and therefore for all developers of value tokens, Ethereum is, quote, the only game in town. Johnny Dean continues to says on October 6, 2020, Lubin admitted his and Ether's, quote, regulatory advantage, stating, quote, Bitcoin and Ethereum arrived before regulators were paying attention, end quote. Not true. And that, quote, we were fortunate enough to frame, or to frame our token as a utility token. ETH is crypto theory, is or, or crypto gas theory. Coming out, he says, in 2020, Lubin was almost uh, gleeful when he said, quote, regulators are watching uh, so pretty much all the tokens need to be introduced, or excuse me, uh, introduced to the world in a convoluted fashion or are really just going to be seen as securities, end quote. So you can come and listen into this if you like. Uh, then Johnny Dean continues, he says, now you understand why he cheerfully claimed, quote, we are big friends and fans of the SEC and praise its application of something called securities laws. He added the SEC has, quote, introduced a new construct called decentralization into their regulatory thinking. Uh, Johnny Dean continues, he says, Lubin praised the Hinman speech and stated the SEC saw Bitcoin and Ether as, quote, decentralized and said, quote, no transactions involving those particular assets are considered to be securities. He continues down here and says, of course, Lubin cannot stop there. He also added, quote, they have not said the same about other tokens like XRP, which we've known if you've been following the channel or following, you know, this uh, Johnny D or digital asset investor, we've seen him on video footage. Like whenever it comes to his interviews, he tends to throw up Ripple and XRP into the, into the conversation somehow. So, uh, and it says, Lubin claimed to know the SEC was going to find any other token, or excuse me, find any token other than Bitcoin and Ethereum to be decentralized. Who was Lubin's source? Bill Hinman. 
So coming down here, uh, Johnny Dean continues and says, thus, in 2018, Bitcoin and Ethereum were the only two platforms with regulatory clarity. With Bitcoin limitations, it drove almost all I mean, it drove almost all serious developers to Ethereum. Today, many underestimate how much of the de facto monopoly the free pass provided. But it does put this claim down here in context, which this is from consensus as a kind of a kind of reminder that Ethereum is the most actively developed, most transacted upon blockchain network in the world. So it's a great uh, th tweet thread by uh, Johnny Deaton kind of covering stuff that, you know, that's a, that, you know, some of us that's a part of the XRP community that's been following, you know, the Ripple versus AC cases, things that we're highly aware of. Uh, continuing on here, I thought this was pretty interesting. This is from uh, Time. It says Vitalik Buterin, co-founder of Ethereum. Now he's fighting for crypto's futures. So if you take a look at this, it says the prince of crypto has concerns. If, uh, Ethereum creator Vitalik Buterin fights to fix the world he created. So coming over here, there was a funny meme that came over. It says, this is, this, is the, this is the shirt he should have worn. So it says, running out of time. Disguise ETH ICO wells. Ridiculous gas fees. Does not scale. So this is that whole Joe Lubin saying, you know, it was a prototype or a demo. Uh, and then he says, conflicts of interest. Quite interesting. Uh, coming over here, James K. Finally has a tweet right here, kind of an update. It says, the SEC has filed its response to Ripple's motion to strike the uh, Mets supplemental expert report. So you can come in here and, and take a look if you'd like to see the details of it. But he says, uh, what a poorly written response. It's repetitive, a sign of a weak argument. It wrongly accuses Ripple of failing to follow proper procedure when the failure was at SEC's. And almost comically offers to consent to reopening a deadline the SEC blew. XRP Crypto Wolf says, SEC wants to strike everything Ripple does. At what point are they going to admit they're losing the XRP lawsuit? I mean, absolutely. I, I mean, it, it won't happen. Uh, right here, Stuart Alderati. So Stuart Alderati, his uh, Ripple's general counsel, he says, less than a quarter in 2022, there's no doubt in my mind, this is the year where all eyes will be on crypto regulation. I pinned an opt-ed for uh this is rc markets on what crypto industry needs from u.s policymakers in order to foster american innovation so this is extremely important for the u.s uh so coming out here he says just in the past two weeks we've had the uh, executive order in a bipartisan letter from and you know uh representative tom Emmer and all these uh individuals here regarding the sec's overly burdensome co uh covert campaign against crypto companies these policymakers recognize the vast potential of these technologies and the consequences of crypto innovation and talent moving overseas without regulatory clarity. The stakes are high. The stakes are absolutely high. XRP Crypto Wolf says 2022 will be so important for crypto uh, regulations and the XRP lawsuit that we all need to make sure we only vote in congressmen, uh, congressmen and women who are pro crypto and won't stifle innovation. I 100% I agree with that. That is absolutely facts. Uh, J.W. Verrett, we kind of, uh, this is the, he was on, I think it was the board, um, I forgot what, what he was on, but he was a part of uh, the advisory board, I think, and we've showed a video of J.W. Verrett, him kind of calling out uh, Chair Gensler, you know, on his kind of farewell, <laughs> so he called out Chair, Chair Gensler, and he kind of had a tweet there that I wanted to cover, he says, sharing my Law 360 piece today, challenging the SEC's abuse of the Howey test in a case against Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse. Also, a thread on how the SC may be making an epic mistake that I've tried to relay to Chair Gensler while on his advisory committee. There we go. He was a JW Verrett was a part of the advisory committee. So it comes out here. He says the Howey test has been cited in hundreds of uh, Apple was Ap Apple Ap opinions, many of which have expanded it beyond its original meaning in the original case of almost 90 years ago. The original language talked about profit solely from the efforts of others. To say the element has been uh, watered down by circuit courts is is the wrong metaphor. It has been Niagara Falled. So we talk about you know the Howey test being you know uh, stretched beyond uh, recognition. He's saying instead of it being you know watered down, it's being Niagara Falled. Meaning this is it's just getting absurd. So I want to thank J W uh, thank J W Verrett for calling out Chair Gensler and kind of joining the fight, fighting the good fight for the entire space. So that's kind of the update of what's going on with the Ripple versus SC case, the stuff going on with Ethereum and XRP and Ripple. Now we're going to look at CNBC. As we see, the SP 500 is up 1.17%, 1, 1 NASDAQ up 2.05%. So there's some, some green within the markets, which is positivity. I wanted to cover this. It says Biden warns of global black backlash if China helps Russia attack on Ukraine. So 
There's still, you know, you still got the Russian, Ukraine uh, invasion stuff. There's still a lot of different things, a lot of different narratives being pushed out there that, you know, are definitely influencing our markets and suppressing the markets. Come on over here, it says, four, this is from Cointelegraph, 14% of Salvadorian businesses have transacted in BTC Chamber of Commerce. El Salvador made history in September 2021 by becoming the first country to officially recognize Bitcoin as legal tender. I mean, that's that's pretty huge. And this is just this is just the start. That's absolutely massive. Uh, coming over here from Cointelegraph, it says, Central Bank of Russia tightens peer-to-peer -peer transactions monitoring, including those in crypto. The regulator's recommendation is designed to prevent capital flight amid economic collapse. Which is kind of sad. I mean, you got, you know, Putin kind of, you know, running this thing, invasion, and, you know, uh, obviously the sanctions are starting to play its toll. And, you know, this the poor citizens are, you know, dealing with the backlash of that. You know, now the Russian ruble is, you know, being highly affected. So, like, if they have, you know, their crypto assets or they want to convert to crypto assets, you know, pretty much protect their, you know, their money and, you know, their status and, you know, their wealth. It's like now you have... These, these banks, you know, tightening their peer-to-peer -peer transaction monitoring, which is like, wow, man. More suppression, more more stifling there. Uh, this is from Decrypt. It says, Ethereum outflows from exchanges hits 2022 peak as ETH price surges. Large outflows from exchanges are considered a single or a signal that traders aren't looking to sell, a potentially bullish sign for Ethereum. Coming out here says, more than 500 million worth of Ethereum was withdrawn from cryptocurrency exchanges earlier this week as traders look to hold onto their crypto in anticipation of bullish price action. Hmm. That's that's quite interesting. I know we've all been waiting for this uh this this last hurrah in this market cycle. Uh says right here, this is the Dow, so decentralized autonomous organization. So it says the Dow Treasury's top 8.2 billion on Ethereum, 1.3 billion on the Solana. Deep Dow says analytics web uh website Deep Dow began tracking da uh, data from Dow's built on Solana earlier this week. It says Interest in decentralized autonomous organizations, better known as DAOs, has seen a sharp increase since the rise and fall of the Constitution DAO, a group that raised 45 million ETH last year in a failed attempt to buy a limited edition copy of the U.S. Constitution. So th this is huge. You know, you have DAOs out there that are trying to buy like professional teams. Like there was a DAO trying to buy the uh, the Denver Broncos, the National Football League uh, football team, which is huge. And, you know, people are seeing the value in being a part of these DAOs because it's like you can, you know, whether it's holding the NFT or, you know, putting a certain allocation of your money into this this group effort, you can, you know, own pieces of things instead of, you know, having to own, for instance, a whole crypto punk where you're paying hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars for it. You can, you know, be a part of a DAO that actually holds it within their reserves or within their vault, which is which is huge. A lot of people are seeing this as, you know, it's like the whole decentralized community effort type thing which is allows more people to get into things like that which is awesome this says GameStop announces launch of nft marketplace for q2 2022 to, or 22 2022 <laughs> gamestop the video game store the beloved of millennials have made a strong pivot to crypto now it's launching a new nft marketplace quite interested to see where, where this is going to go um yeah, GameStop took, you know, sh shan me for many, many years when it comes to, you know, selling back your video games to try to buy new ones. <laughs> you buy it from them for $50, $60, and you go to sell it back, and then they give you like $20, or you can get $30 store credit. All right, right here, <laughs> it says, Terrorist co-founder wants to get $10 billion in Bitcoin reserves for UST. So I've talked about this in a previous video, how... Uh, you know, obviously, UST Terra is having, you know, uh, a lot of their, uh, what is it called? Their lock up. They have a lot locked up. So now they're trying to put, you know, a lot of money of a lot worth of Bitcoin, a lot of money worth of Bitcoin within their reserves, which is only going to strengthen, you know, Terra and UST, which is huge. Uh, last one right here says <clears throat> this from Blockworks at two. It says Airbnb CEO crypto is the most requested feature on Airbnb. So, you know, I cannot wait to see the day to where. You know how we go out to, you know, the store and, you know, whether we're using, you know, our credit cards or our Apple Pay or whatever, it's just kind of normal, second nature. I remember there was one point in time where, you know, most people were using cash when I was growing up and then we converted into using cards. I can't wait to see the day to where, you know, we're just literally just sending, you know, for instance, Bitcoin or Ethereum or, you know, XRP in, in a matter of seconds to pay for things like to where that's like normal. Like we have all these apps, you know, you have the cash app, you have um, just all these different, you know, uh, pay, payment style apps, you know, uh, Google Pay, 
Apple Pay, all that stuff. Like when, whenever all these ads are on there, we could just literally, you know, s send money to one another and pay for things. And it's streamless. And it's right now, it's all, you know, proven on the blockchain, proven on whatever wallet is receiving the funds. Like I can't wait to see that day to where things flow more efficiently. You know what I'm saying? I love to see this. There's a lot of positivity. There's a lot of, uh, you know, adoption still happening, even in the midst of all the negativity that's going on. With all that being said, stay strong out there. Be safe.